Here are some of the most interesting facts about the living rock. Wait until you find out how this thing actually tastes. Number nine, what is it? So what exactly is this thing? Is this rock actually alive and breathing? Actually, yes. This rock actually is a living creature called Pura chilensis. It's an interestingly bizarre sea creature also known as the living rock. The living rock is a type of tunicate. Tunicates are sea creatures named after their thick exteriors or tunics made from tunicate. That's exactly what makes them look like a rock. It's a hardy matrix of cellulose-like material that helps them attach to a hard surface. Basically, they don't move, and wherever they attach, that's where they'll remain for the rest of their lives. These guys may look like rocks, but they're alive. The insides of this tunicate are lined with a layer of skin and muscular band. Inside of these layers is the main body of this animal. In general, tunicates live attached to a hard surface on the ocean floor, just like the living rock. They're commonly known as sea squirts. Number eight, sea squirts. And while we're talking about sea squirts, you're probably wondering what they are. Well, a sea squirt looks a lot like a plant, but it's definitely an animal. Sea squirts are more scientifically known as tunicates or ascidians. Surprisingly, these animals are in the same phylum we are. That's the phylum chordata, which includes humans, whales, sharks, and fish. There are over 2,000 species of sea squirts, and they're found throughout the world. Some species are solitary, while some form large colonies. Sea squirts attach to things such as piers, docks, boats, rocks, and basically any hard service where they have access to the resources they need. So what exactly do they need? Well, definitely some seawater. Sea squirts have two siphons because they're filter feeders. They use one inhalant siphon to pull seawater into their body to feed on algae and microorganisms. Then they have an exhalant siphon, which they use to expel that same seawater out in whatever waste they don't need. When someone picks up a sea squirt, sometimes they'll forcefully eject water from its siphon. And that's how these creatures got its name. So if you pick one up from the water, you may get a wet surprise. Number seven, location. So where are most of these guys found? These guys are often found in dense aggregations off the coast of Chile and Peru. Also known as Pura in Spanish, the rock was first described in 1782 by Juan Ignacio Molina. Off the Chilean coast, the living rock is actually heavily fished. It actually happens to be one of the main food sources for other local species such as Chilean abalone. The number of Chilean abalone grew so much, they've threatened to wipe out the living rock and severely restricted their growth for more than two decades. It really doesn't take much to fish the rock. Many locals just use a basic wetsuit and goggles to go get them. Mostly in rocky areas close to shore, but occasionally farther out to sea. Number six, local delicacy. Apparently, locals are pretty big into eating the living rock. It's one of Chile's oldest and most controversial delicacies. Fishermen typically cut the rock into slices with a handsaw. Then they use their fingers to pull out the siphons because it's probably not tasty to eat. That's what we're guessing. And since you can either eat the living rock raw or cooked, the options are kind of unlimited. Apparently, these guys are pretty polarizing. One famous Chilean chef, Rodolfo Guzman, claims that half of Chile love the taste and the other half hates it. Traditionally, the living rock is served raw, topped with freshly squeezed lemon. Another popular way is combining it raw with chopped onion, cilantro, green onion, salt, oil, and lemon juice, and basically it's kind of like salsa. It also serves as an element for many dishes when it's chopped up and boiled. It's also fried and eaten on bread. In the south of Chile, it's common to find dried and smoked puree links that are used in soups and stews hanging in food markets. Word has it, the living rock has a pretty strong flavor. Its taste has been described as that of iodine or something bitter and soapy. People have described its taste as oysters and sea urchin mixed in one, and then allowed to ferment to get a very concentrated taste of the sea in one bite. Ugh. Because of its high level of vanadium and the element's toxicity, there are concerns about eating the creature, but we'll get to that a bit later. Number five, import-export. 
The Living Rock definitely doesn't sound like something we'd eat, but we'd definitely just give it a shot out of curiosity. But Chileans are not the only people who enjoy the taste of these guys. The Living Rock, either raw or canned, is shipped to many different countries around the globe. The biggest global consumers are Sweden and Japan. Sweden represents 32.5% of all exports and Japan is second at 24.2%. The Living Rock is also known for its, uh, let's call it, um, lasting effects. Pretty much like oysters and cheaper than taking that little blue pill. Maybe Sweden and Japan are onto something. Again, as far as the taste goes, it's again absolutely weird. Andrew Zimmerin of Bizarre Foods calls it one of the most horrifying things he'd ever seen or eaten in his entire life. He described it as, quote, frightening, absolutely frightening. And he also said that he'll never forget the experience. You'll definitely want to check out our video on the most dangerous foods people actually eat. Number four, independent rocks. Like we said earlier, the living rock is often found in densely packed colonies, either really close to the shore or far out in the sea. This is believed to make reproducing much easier for them. But if they somehow do end up on their own, they figured out a pretty genius way to bypass the whole problem altogether. Since they can't move and they're pretty much stuck to whatever piece of real estate they choose, they had to find a way to reproduce. And indeed they have. They're able to reproduce with themselves if they need to. Well, how does that happen? Amazingly enough, they can release both eggs and sperm simultaneously. And if the sperm egg collisions are successful, they'll produce tiny tadpole-like offspring that will eventually settle onto a rock to grow into adults. Nature had to find a way to make things work for them. So these guys are born with male parts, but grow female parts in adolescence. And that's how nature figured that problem out. In 2005, biologists from Chile wanted to find out how these guys reproduced. First, the isolated individuals were placed in plastic bottles and were left alone for 90 days. Next, the researchers combined pairs either from the same population or from two different populations to see how well they would breed in comparison. After their observations, they gave their self-breeding behavior the perfect name of, quote, selfing. The study also confirmed that if these guys were given a choice between selfing or crossbreeding with another living rock, well, crossbreeding it is. So, selfing was born out of necessity. Apparently, cross-fertilization is just a bit quicker and more successful for them. If they do breed with another living rock, they create more living rock babies that way. Scientists speculate that colonies of thousands and thousands of rocks can breed just out of a single rock. This suggests that when stuck alone in the ocean, selfing provides an opportunity for loner rock individuals to still pass on their genes and keep the species going strong. Number three, it's not blood. It's worth noting though that the red thing you're seeing actually is not blood. The liquid on the inside is clear. The most interesting fact is that for unknown reasons, the living rock has extremely high concentrations of a rare chemical called vanadium. The red that you see when it's opened up is actually just the color of the tissue. Living rocks have a very minimal nervous system, no central brain and no actual visible blood. The concentration of vanadium in the living rock and other tunicates can be up to 10 million times that of surrounding seawater. In fact, sea squirts have been found to be the only organisms in the animal kingdom to accumulate high levels of vanadium in their plasma, and researchers aren't sure what the function of this element has in these animals. Because of the high levels of vanadium, there are concerns about the safety of eating large amounts of living rock. Vanadium is a heavy metal, and just like any other element, too much of it does pose a health risk. Vanadium is generally used along with steel to make stronger tools. The average diet provides trace amounts of vanadium and high doses of vanadium may cause liver damage. However, no in-depth studies have been done to determine the health effects. But one thing we do know is that locals have been eating the living rock for centuries on end without serious health effects. Number two, vanadium. We might as well get a bit more in-depth into vanadium since we're on the subject. It's a medium hard steel blue metal. Although it's not that famous as a metal, it's actually quite valuable in the manufacturing industry because of its malleability and its corrosion resistant qualities. Vanadium rarely exists as a free element in nature. It's found in around 65 different minerals. 
As we mentioned earlier, vanadium steel alloys are used to make extremely tough tools such as axles, armor plates, car gears, springs, and cutting tools. Vanadium alloys are even used to make nuclear reactors because of their low neutron absorbing properties. High doses of vanadium are toxic to us, but scientists think we still need the element in very small amounts for normal bone growth. Vanadium can be found in trace amounts in many types of foods such as mushrooms, black pepper, parsley, and dill weed. When we eat a balanced diet, we consume just 0.01 milligrams per day, and this is more than enough for our biological needs. So, how are the guys in Peru and Chile eating the living rock with that much vanadium in it? Number 1. Camouflage For most people, if they saw a living rock on the beach, they wouldn't even think twice wondering whether or not this crazy animal is edible. It certainly doesn't even look edible, much less alive, from its appearance on the outside. And when it's opened up, its bright red interior might make people think that it's poisonous. Brightly colored animals are often poisonous or venomous. These colors often act as a warning sign to other animals in search of food. Watch this next video to find out about the most dangerous foods people actually eat.